All right, we are back with another ranking video and today I'm going to be ranking my foundations. So I have done palettes, highlighters, bronzers, blushes, and now foundations. I'm so excited for this video because this again, I say this every time, this was really hard, okay? I will be ranking 11 of these. I recently added a foundation to my collection and then another one is kind of a mini, but I've used it plenty of times. So I'm I know my thoughts pretty well on that one, so let's hop into it. All right, so my 11th foundation in my collection is from Becca, and this is their Ultimate Coverage Complexion Cream. Now, actually, before I share my thoughts on this, let me tell you a little bit about my skin. So I do have dry skin, but it's not extremely dry, especially this time of year when it's starting to heat up a little bit. During the bitter cold winter months, I am pretty dry and I need a lot of hydration but I kind of have a unique perspective, I feel like, because a few years ago I had pretty oily skin, and especially in my teenage years, I was very oily, so I like a finish that's a little bit more natural and a little bit more satiny, because if something is too dewy, I just feel oily. Like, I can't shake that from my mind of when I was a teenager and had oily skin and hated having oily skin, so even now when my skin is drier, I don't want anything to be too dewy, at least not in my T-zone, so... Hopefully that kind of helps explain my thoughts on these, but back to the Becca one. So for the Ultimate Coverage Complexion Cream, I have mine in the shade Buff, and I will do some swatches in this video, but keep in mind that some of these are more like a self-tanner shade for me, and some of them are a little bit closer. So there is that. Now, the reason that I ranked this so low, I do like this, but if I'm being honest, I've been debating decluttering it, so maybe that means that I just kind of should. It's just a very thick formula, so you have to apply it in a certain way. I find that if I use a brush or a sponge, it looks very heavy on my skin, and actually my preferred method with this, which is hardly ever my preferred method, but I actually like like applying this with my fingers because the heat of my fingers helps to melt it and blend it into the skin and I find I get the best result when I do that but in general I find this to be pretty cakey and very heavy and my preference for a foundation is more of a medium coverage that kind of leans towards the lighter side so this I think for the right person you would enjoy it it's very full coverage it's going to cover all of any imperfections that you want to cover up but you're also gonna be able to tell you're wearing makeup. However, one thing that I do like about this is it's one of the few foundations that I find looks better as I wear it. Most foundations kind of start to fade away, but this one I think starts to look better and better as your natural oils start to seep through it. That sounds disgusting. Foundation 10 is the Urban Decay All Nighter. Now, if you would have asked me to rank these a year or two ago, I probably would have ranked this one very high, but my preference has changed and this is just a little bit too heavy for me now. One thing to make note of with this foundation is that it does oxidize quite a bit. So when you first apply it, it's so light. And then as it sits on the skin, it almost becomes a little bit too dark. So that can be tricky for me. I'm actually wearing it today mixed in with another foundation. And when I first applied it, I was like, okay, cool. I did a nice mixing. The shade matches pretty good. And then as it deepens up a little bit, I'm like, never mind, that didn't work. So for that reason, it can be harder to mix because you think you found a nice shade match, but it's a trick. This can look a little bit dry on my skin, so I have to prime very nicely before applying it. I also find that it can kind of look a little bit textured on the skin. It's not as smooth as a few others that I have to mention. And I find that out of all of them, these two definitely look the most like foundation, but they're also the most full coverage, so I feel like that's usually the trade-off. So foundation number nine is on the complete other end of the spectrum, and that is this. So this is the Unfoundation from the brand Undone, and it's basically just a sheer tint. So the coverage of this is the most minimal out of anything in this video. So keep that in mind when I'm saying sheer, I mean sheer. Oh, and I have mine in the shade two, and I have All Nighter in 3.25. So this product is very watery, you can hear it. Maybe you can't. Is that like some ASMR right there? And if you don't feel comfortable with the coverage of this, because again, it's very sheer, this is a fantastic product for mixing. That's actually what I'm wearing today. These two mixed together, because this is so sheer, this is so full coverage. They mix together nicely to kind of thin out the all-nighter, but give me a finish that I prefer. And I actually do enjoy the sheer coverage of this for my minimal makeup days. 
But honestly, for the most part, if I'm not going, if I'm going for a minimal look, usually I just won't wear foundation. But when I want a little bit of something, this is so natural on the skin. Like your skin just looks glowy and very healthy. Now you do have to be careful because I found that if I have some like dry patches right here, this can emphasize that slightly. Not too much, but it, you, you can tell. But in general, I just find that this is, aside from that, pretty much unrecognizable on the skin. It just makes you look very dewy. Foundation number eight comes from Wet n Wild and this is their Pump Makeup Locker Foundation and I have mine in the shade of light. Packaging on this is a little funny and a little bit messy and I find this really too lean, very pink toned. And this is another one, I would say the coverage is more light. Maybe you could build it up to medium, but definitely not full. But it's a product that is very, 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 very dewy. And like, when I say dewy, I don't just mean glowy, I also mean like tacky. Like you have to set this. If you do not, it will come off on everything. If you touch your face, it will come off on your finger, it'll come off on your clothes you have to set this. But when you do set it, it's really pretty and natural. And I feel like it wears pretty well throughout the day. I find it to look very radiant and youthful. So I do enjoy this. Foundation number seven is very polarizing. This is from Becca. It's their Skin Love Weightless Blur Foundation. And I have the shade Vanilla. So I know a lot of people that do not like this, but I think for a natural look, this is a really nice product. I find it to be, you can get a medium coverage out of it find it to be you can watch <laughs> but it's a little bit of a thicker formula it's definitely not runny like some of the other ones that I talked about it's not the most long wearing foundation I would say out of all that I have to mention probably has the worst wear time except for maybe behind this but I personally really like the natural finish that it has number six is from first aid beauty this is their ultra repair tinted moisturizer and i have the shade light this is one of my favorites for summertime it's just very natural again this is a tinted moisturizer so the coverage on it is going to be minimal but you can build it up to a lighter medium coverage in my opinion and the shade light is a little bit too dark for me i should have a shade up honestly this has spf 30 in it and it's just really natural for a beach day but i also feel like because i do get some coverage out of it i feel like i can wear it for my more full glam days if i combine it with some concealers and whatnot all right number five is my little itty bitty baby this is the hourglass vanish stick and i have the shade nude this is too dark for me but this was just a little sample from sephora this i totally get the hype of and I still have a couple more uses on this. This looks like nothing. And I'm really debating picking up my shade at Sephora because I really like this and I didn't want to like it, to be honest. I wanted to hate it because it's a little bit pricier, but this is a very nice product. It looks so beautiful on the skin. And it's another one that I think tends to look a little bit better the longer that you wear it and the longer that it just kind of melts into the skin and it's very, very smoothing. It just looks very healthy. I do find though with this product, I have to prep my skin beforehand because if I do not, it just feels very tight and dry on my face. So if you have oily skin, that might not be a concern for you, but if you are very dry, I would recommend hydrating pretty thoroughly before applying it. All right, foundation number four. You didn't see this coming because this is pretty new to me. This is the Pure Cosmetics 4-in-1 Mineral Foundation, and I have mine in the shade Light. Oh, and if I didn't mention my shade on the Hourglass one, which again is too dark for me, but is the shade Nude. So this is a pressed powder foundation. This is, upon first application, it's gonna be pretty light coverage, but you can build it up to a nice medium. This has, very quickly become my favorite go-to foundation for day to day because it's so effortless to apply it's just so much more convenient to apply a powder foundation than to apply a liquid and then you don't have to worry about setting the powder down and this has a finish to it that doesn't look super powdery yeah it's going to be drier than like this but i also don't feel like it looks very flaky and dry the way some powders can. I feel like it just kind of almost has a finish to it, like a cream, and it wears so beautifully throughout the day. Like the first time that I applied this, I was probably being so obnoxious the whole day because I just kept looking at myself in every mirror and I was like, wow, my skin looks so good. I can't believe how great my skin looks from a powder foundation. 
This is an oldie, but a goodie, and I highly recommend it. All right, we're now moving into the top three, and the third one is kind of a bummer because it's being discontinued, but you can still find this. It's on sale at Nordstrom Rack. You can sometimes find it at TJ Maxx and whatnot. And this is from Stila. It's their Aqua Glow Serum Foundation. This is so good. So I have the shade Light. This is a very, very thin formula. It's like basically water. And there's the swatch of it. Now, for how thin and serum it is, you actually get pretty good coverage with it. You can layer it up to pretty much a full coverage, but it's not very heavy on the skin. It's not cakey. It just sits like a water, so it's very, very hydrating. The only thing that I will say about this is you kind of have to be careful with which products you put underneath it because if you put some primers I'll put on and then I'll put this on top and I can get some balling on my skin. But I love this so much that that doesn't even bother me. I just brush away the balls. The finish is very natural, almost to the point where it kind of emphasizes some pores in here because it's not as smoothing as some other ones, like the next two I'm going to mention. But I can get past that because this just looks so natural and it makes my skin look radiant and very, very healthy. All right, my number two is from Too Faced and I'm gonna give you a spoiler alert. My number one is from Too Faced also. They just make great foundations. This is the Born This Way foundation and I have mine in the shade Vanilla. So vanilla is a tad bit dark for me, but I can make it work. A lot of these are a little dark for me, but I make them work. Also, can we just go back for a second to the all-nighter? Remember when I applied it and it was pretty much white? Look how dark it is now. This is so smoothing on the skin. It is a more full coverage product, but you can kind of sheer it out. I hardly use any of this, so I get more of the medium coverage that I want and it's not heavy on the skin because I'm using such a light amount, but this builds nicely if you want to layer it up. And I also feel like the formula of this is just so easily manipulated that whether you have dry skin or oily skin, you can just switch up the base and the primer that you're using and you will still like this. I feel like this is just a very universal foundation. And my number one, very similar. Again, I think it would just work for so many skin types. This is the Peach Perfect from Too Faced. So this is marketed as being a matte foundation, but it's a comfort matte. So it's not drying. And I would say it's honestly more satiny than it is matte. Mine is way too dark, just a warning. This is the shade Warm Nude, and I usually mix it with something else, or I reserve this for my super dark self-tanning days. Now, this has a peachy fragrance to it. That's the one thing that I hate about this. I hate the smell and I just wish they wouldn't put a fragrance in it. But this is the most long wearing foundation that I have ever found. It claims to be 14 hours and I would agree with that. 14 hours, your foundation is still gonna look flawless. And this is mattifying, but again, it looks natural. So for me, I like it because I can really add the dew and add the glow onto my cheeks with highlighters and whatnot, but my forehead is never gonna look greasy or too shiny. It just looks natural and satin E satiny. And this comes with so much product. You get 1.6 fluid ounces of product and it actually costs a little bit less than most high-end foundations. And this is one of the most underrated foundations out there. It's beautiful. But thanks for watching this next video in my ranking series. I will leave my playlist linked down below. And also let me know if you would like me to do any more of these. I think this might be my last video in the series, but I have had some requests to maybe do like lip glosses or face palettes. I don't have a ton of face palettes, so that video would be pretty short. So let me know your thoughts. What would you like to see next, if anything? Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.